surrounding high school that chased her in the first place. Also, investigation she All right, praise the Lord, everyone. Good evening, and welcome to our Thursday night Bible study. As we know, we are praying for Apostle Shireen Lathan. She won't be with us tonight. We are praying with her and for her in the transition of her husband, uh, but she has left us in capable hands, and we are so glad to have with us tonight um, Pastor Lonnie Davis. He is no stranger to Liberty Temple. He's no stranger to our house. He blessed us uh, earlier this year when he came and brought a mighty word of God. And so we're going to receive him tonight as he comes. So we're going to receive Pastor Lonnie Davis. Give God a hand praise for him as he comes. Bless you, man of God. All right. God bless you, Prophet Fred, and to all of my God's children. Thank and praise God for another Lord's Day. For this is the day that the Lord has made, and I shall rejoice and be glad in it. We know that it's no goodness of our own, but it is by the grace and it is by the mercies of God. Therefore, we're not consumed. So praise God, just as we go a little further into our gathering and the reason why we're here, let's just celebrate quality leadership and the person of apostle, praise God, Lathan, come on, let's celebrate her if you don't mind, man of God, and if you don't mind, woman of God, we appreciate her so very much and the most capable staff over at Liberty Temple, we praise God for them as well. I like to do this from every uh, every once in a while to see, to make sure that we are presenting to you quality yeah. broadcast. Can everyone see me well and can everyone hear well? He's on the phone. Let's get this in the way. Is that on Facebook? We're going to make sure that we got everything in order. <clears throat> this is Prophet uh, Fee, uh, Fred. You may have to steer me here. If you all can see it well and hear it well, I would greatly appreciate if someone would let me know so that we can uh, go ahead and proceed further in our so gathering. Appreciate you so very much for that. All right, now, saints, <clears throat> I hope and pray that everyone have had a fun-filled day today. We're certainly going to be praying for our apostle, and we're going to be, continue to look to the Lord. Let me tell you, over at Liberty Temple, you all have quality leadership over there. Lift your leader up before the Lord. Continue to lift her up before the Lord, because this is where we show how much we do love uh, leadership, such as the person of apostle, Lathan. Is that all right, everybody? And again, thank you, Prophet Fred, and to all of those maternal girls. I hope those maternal girls, one of them always, she be with me and follow me all the time, Sister Della. I think I mentioned her name right, but if I didn't, forgive me. We thank God for her. And just in case, 
uh, Apostle is listening to you. Apostle, we love you. Can everybody type that on the screen? I haven't seen it on Facebook yet, but if you all can type that on the screen or perhaps put it on here to let us know that we love her, we shall go further with our lambs and our teachings. Thank God for Jesus. Come on, saints, let's have a quick word of prayer. We shall go further with our learnings and our teachings. I love the Lord, and I thank and praise God for Jesus. Come on, let's pray. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you, Lord. We love you. God, you know you're great, and you're greatly to be praised in spite of and despite of, of the challenges that we may be facing right now and what we may be going through. God, we know that you're still able, and you can do anything but fail. God, you know that you are a responding God. Not only are you a responding God, you are a responsible God. You told us in your word, God, that if we do our part, then you'll do your part. Thank you for that truth, God. Now, as we proceed further in our learnings and our teachings, God, we pray that you'll open us up to receive the learnings and the teachings. Give us listening ears and receptive hearts to hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say. God, thank you. And we will not regulate your anointing only to come to the brick and the mortar. No, God, we're not that, we're not that naive and neither are we that foolish. God, come in these telephones and come in these Facebooks and these Instagrams and these YouTubes, God, in these Zooms and these Twitters. God, give us a mighty visitation. In fact, God, you told us in your word that if we ask, it shall be given. Change us, God. We want you, God, to put your hand of approval upon our gathering now in the name of Jesus. And then, God, as we go further, God, we pray now, God, that you'll bind the forces of Satan on every hand that will come and try to come along and be used as, a, as Satan's agent to distract us, to detour us. God, we thank you right now for what's about to be released into this atmosphere. It is in your dear son Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Amen and amen. Come on, man of God. Come on, woman of God. If you all can unmute for just a little while, I'd love to hear the response of the people. If you all don't mind, man of God, if you don't mind, woman of God, why don't you be so kind to just say amen? And then come on, I need you all to share and share and share. I think that's what Apostle will be doing right now, telling y'all to share with your friends and share with your followers. From some of y'all, I had a piece of paper around here. I don't know where it went to, Prophet Fred. Look at that. Oh, here it is right here. We want you all to follow us, praise God, over on YouTube. And then we want you all, praise God, to follow us on Facebook and go to Instagram and Twitter. Amen. We thank God. For, oh, y'all can't. Y'all can't. All right. Thank you. Hey, sister girl. I didn't see you. I didn't see you. Come on in. Now. You can't uh, unmute. So don't unmute. But I just trust and pray that you're being agents of obedience tonight. Get your Bibles. We're going to follow in the trend. We're going to follow in the trend that apostles have laid before us. Hearing from God. And this time, man of God, and in this season, woman of God. We have to make sure that we are listening to God. And the best way to make sure that we're listening to God is we do not have divided loyalties. We must understand clearly that when God speaks, he talks for a reason. And we are in a time now that it's time for us to mature from that place of something told me to you know who it is. The voice of God. How many of y'all know the difference between the voice of God and the voice of yourself and the voice of Satan? Well, if you don't, during these sessions that we have learned, during these sessions, I have come to the point that, God, I want to get a little closer to you. I want my walk to be more intense because I want to move completely away from something told me. And then can I say this y'all to y'all? God, in his infinite wisdom, he will create a situation where only you will know that it's his voice. Yeah, that's good. He'll let your situation go so bad, so left, that you will know that it's him that got to pull you from that place of desperation. Let's go with me. If y'all there, I want y'all to help me. Put this on the screen for me. Bless his holy name. I want you all to go to 2 Kings chapter number three. 2 Kings chapter number three. Hey, Apostle is on. God bless you. I think she on. If I'm not, I just got excited for no reason, but that's okay. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Uh, 2 Kings chapter number three. We're going to begin reading for the sake of time. Let's go here. Let's begin reading at verse number seven. And then I want to jump down to, bless his holy name, verse number 11. And we're going to go further. Rather familiar passage of scripture to those that are familiar with the Holy Scripture. The Bible says, Brother Cliff Turner, uh, 2 Kings chapter number three and verse number seven, the Bible says, and he went and sent to Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, saying, the king of Moab has rebelled against me. Will you go up with me against Moab to do battle? And he said, Jehoshaphat now is speaking back to the king of Israel. 
I will go up with you. And I am as you are, and my people as your people, and my horses as your horses. Jump down to verse number 11, 2 Kings chapter number 3. Am I doing okay, y'all? Y'all just let me know. Bless his holy name. 2 Kings chapter number 3 and verse number 11 says, But Jehoshaphat said, let's go to verse number 10, because this is a good picture right here. And the king of Israel said, Elias, Elias, that the Lord have called these three kings together to deliver them into the hands of Moab. Verse number 11 said in 2 Kings chapter number 3, But Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord? that we may inquire of the Lord by him. Listen, y'all. One of the kings of Israel's servants said, uh, said unto him, here is Elisha, the son of Saphat, which poured water onto the hands of Elisha. I want to deal with this for a second. Verse number 12, and Jehoshaphat said, the word of the Lord is with him. Here it is. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat and the king of Edom went down to him. I'm going to stop right there because I want to deal with something for a second. Hearing the voice of God. Now, when you have a trusted vessel in the earth, when you have a trusted vessel in the earth that can be trusted to give you what thus says the Lord, it, it will be authorized by God as if God is speaking to you. And one of the things that I found out here out of chapter three of second Kings is Jehoshaphat made a lot of mistakes. Not only did he make the mistakes to affect him, but he also made the mistakes to affect others. And that's bad. And that's kind of reckless, isn't it? For you to praise God, make that foolish mistake. That not only the mistake that you make from not hearing from God, it not only will affect you, but it will affect things that's around you. And I say, man, y'all ain't going to tell the truth right now. But the truth of the matter is we made that mistake. But thank God gave us the ability not to become repeat offenders. Second Kings, we there, y'all. Chapter number three. And verse number seven says, praise God, three kings were facing a situation. Matter of fact, there was two of them that was really facing the situation and they joined together, had an agreement, formed an alliance to go and to praise God, do war with somebody that was contended against him. Second Kings chapter number three says prophet war. And he went and sent to Jehoshaphat, the king of Moab. And he reports to him and says, will you go to battle with us? Now I want you to receive something in your spirit, man of God. Pardon me for getting comfortable. Don't allow someone else's issue to become your issue without you consulting God first. I think that was pretty good. Can I get a witness here, somebody? <laughs> Never allow someone else's issue to be transferred to you and you have not consulted God about. And here Jehoshaphat had made that bad mistake. Jehoshaphat continued to link himself up with people, here it is, that was out of covenant with God. Now, ain't nobody gonna say, man, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get in trouble. But how many of y'all know that the danger that we run by being unequally yoked? So yeah, I feel God now. How can two walk together except they agree? He didn't consult with God yet. So what he did was he just started putting himself in a position. Yeah, I will go with you. And did you not know, beloved, over in the New Testament, that we ought to think on these things, that if there be any virtue, if there be any good, you know, there is a process that we must go through before we respond to a request. Yeah, that was good. Before we respond to something, you got to go through the process. See if there's some gentleness in it. See, come on, y'all. See if there's some, uh, some, some meekness in it. Come on, y'all. See, see, see if it's going to add something to your situation. Because if you bring in trouble my way, why don't you just keep on going? Am I doing okay so far, y'all? Let, let's deal with this for a second. I'm loving on God right now. Look at the Bible says, praise God. It says, praise God. And uh, Second Kings, for those that's coming along. Chapter number three, the Bible says, uh, and the king of Moab rebelled against me. Will you go with me? And Jehoshaphat with his silly self, pardon me, y'all, but he was awfully silly here. He said, I will go up with you. And he says, I am as you are. Here he is. He reduced himself to fit in where it was not his responsibility. How many of us don't go through that before? We trying to get in where we don't belong. Did you not know that we are peculiar? You know, I made that fatal mistake, trying my best. Yeah, come on, Davis. 
trying my best, I, uh, trying to get in places where God did not authorize me to be. Uh, and then when I got there, I realized that I didn't hear God. I heard from myself. I heard from my flesh. Uh, every door is not a God's door. Come on, y'all. Uh, every opportunity is not a God's opportunity. Uh, but God would allow you to get in there just to show you that I did not send you. You went out there on your own. It's like this, bootlegging. Y'all ain't going to say, man, I ain't getting much help. I can't look down at my phone. So I only can believe and trust and pray that y'all follow me with me. Perhaps I'll do it like this. Watch this, watch this. Because I want to make sure I ain't talking to myself and somebody's on the other end. I see some of y'all saying amen. So the Bible says, praise God, he, he now comes into allegiance. He reduced himself to somebody that's outside of the covenant and out of the will of God. Come on, y'all. Bible said in first, uh, second Kings chapter number three, the Bible says, and then he says, I will go with you. Watch this. And he says, and uh, my people will be your people and my horses, here it is, will be your horses. Now, when you don't hear from the voice of God, you start reducing yourself. And then what you do is prophet Ward, watch this. You start giving away resources that you're going to need for your assignment. <laughs> Man, that was good. That just stripped in my faith right there, Sister Della. He started, look what he says. It ain't me. It's in the Bible. The Bible said, he says, my people, the people that you have authority over. The, come on, y'all. The people that you have charged over under your rod. Now you're going to submit them under that. And they themselves now have to follow after the lead. Here it is. And then he gives away his horses. How are you going to get from here to there if you're giving away your resources? Mm. <laughs> yeah, I learned this a long time ago. Uh, stop telling your problems to people that can't solve them. And stop giving your stuff away to people that's causing you problems. Now, that was real good. I said that was real good. I feel preaching. Come on, y'all. If I tune up tonight, please forgive me. <laughs> stop telling your problems to people that can't solve them. And stop telling, come on, somebody. And stop allowing your problems to be in somebody else's situation that you ain't trying to make better yourself. So Jehoshaphat goes on. He goes on, Sister Carol. He goes on to say, my people will be your people and your horses will be my horses. And verse number eight in second Kings chapter number, uh, chapter number three, verse eight says, he says, now watch this. And he said, who will go and how shall we go up? And he answered, now watch this. We shall go through the wilderness of Edom. Now I want y'all to receive something in my spirit. I got a few more moments. Y'all let me know how I'm doing now. Watch this, watch this. He now get his directions from somebody, come on, that got bad intel. Oh, this was good. So yeah, he done gave, he done reduced himself. He done gave his resources. Now he getting directions from somebody that's going to direct them into the wilderness. <laughs> See, when you don't have clarity in God, stay there until God tells you to make a move. Have I got a witness here? I said this before. I think it's necessary for me to say it one more time. Uh, in order for me to be effective to where I'm going, I got to be released from where I come from. Help me, God. In order for me to be effective to where I'm going, I got to be released from where I come from. So if God have not released you to go from that place, stay there. And while you're there, come on, somebody, allow God to give you the information that you need for the next phase of your assignment. He gets directions from somebody that led them and directed them to the wilderness. Now, y'all ain't going to say amen. But it's bad for you to follow behind somebody that they done took you from bad to worse. Let's go a little further. So the Bible says, and 2 Kings, y'all put that up there for me. Am I doing okay, y'all? Y'all just let me know. 2 Kings chapter number 3 and verse number 9. So the king, y'all read it for yourself. So the king, he went. And the king of Judah and the king of Edom, three kings, they fetched the compass of seven days journey. <laughs> and there was no water for the host, for the cattle, and for them that follow. Now watch this, Prophet. Prophet Fred, watch this. What can you really get out of the wilderness? You follow somebody that's taking you to a place where there's no fruit, it's non-productive, it's dry. Come on, somebody. And under the leadership at Liberty Temple, come on, y'all, under Apostle Turner and under Apostle Lathan, Y'all know good and plenty. Come on, somebody. Uh, that they're not leading y'all in the place of, come on, famine, lack, and wilderness. You journeying in this faith walk, and there's no signs that you are productive. Come on. Oh, my God. Am I doing okay, y'all? So, yeah. See, when you don't hear from God, uh, the Bible said, for my sheep, they know my voice. 
for the stranger they may, they will not follow. Now, even on this one, watch this. You might see me, but I want you to hear God. Come on. Uh, and if I'm not connecting with your spirit, you ain't got to patronize me. Come on, somebody. Uh, but if I'm not connecting with you, it, it, it would be in your best interest uh, not to follow somebody that you have. Now, that, 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 it's something about the connection. You know, it's something about when the saints used to speak years ago, it connected with your spirit. They, they didn't tell you something. And they didn't give you the format and the formula to failure. They told you, baby, hold on. Baby, pray. Come on. Uh, baby, you better shut your mouth. Go somewhere and sit down until God tell you to stand up. Lord, help me. I don't want to mess up so bad. I don't, I don't, want, I don't want to mess up my mom's own. My sis, my sis, I, 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 I want to do what God tell me to do. And some, sometimes, since God can't talk to you why you're standing up, God then got to talk to you why he got you flat out. When your friends are gone, your money's gone, uh, you in the wilderness, you look around and say, how in the world did I get here? Uh, it's because you listen to something that you entertain. Uh, and I said this before, that whatever controls the mind controls the body. Uh, and whatever is the strongest is the spirit of a man, that's what you're going to do. Uh, and we can rightly define your character by your consistent behavior. Help me here, Holy Ghost. I'm starting to feel power. Uh, we can rightly define your character by your consistent behavior. Uh, why do we call liars liars? Because they consistently lie. Uh, why do we call cheaters dogs? I'm sorry. Why do we call cheaters cheaters? Because they consistently cheat. Now let's flip the script on that thing. Uh, why do we call praisers praisers? Because they got the revelation uh, that I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Pardon me, y'all. I'm just getting excited because I'm hearing God now because I made those fatal mistakes before. It can tell my Messiah, listening to a voice that led me into the wilderness, mama. The Bible says, praise God. So they there for seven days and they realize, wait a minute, that we ain't got no water. We ain't got none only for us, but we ain't got none for what's behind us. And that speaks volume to what I'm about to say. What we doing right now, it ought to be something that we're leaving for a generation that's behind us. Come on. You want this generation, praise God, the generation coming behind us just to have a jump and a shout, but don't have a prayer life? Y'all ain't saying much. I don't know the difference between God or something told me. Hey, I feel glory now. I, we got to leave something for the generation behind us that they'll be able to, to grab a hold of that mantle, I, to have a prayer life. Come on. I, stop being so concerned about being popular. Get somewhere and be powerful. You want to be known? Be recognized for having a prayer life with God. Hey, Katana Messiah. Can I go a little further, y'all? Second Kings. Chapter number three. Y'all follow me. Y'all help me out here. Second Kings chapter number three. And verse number 10 says, so the king finally realized, he says, the king of Israel says, alas, the Lord. Wait a minute. Now the Lord has caused these three kings together. Wait a minute. It ain't the Lord. It's you. Y'all know y'all ain't going to say, man, we made that mistake before. Something go our way. We don't want to take accountability of it. It's bad that we went from blaming the devil to now saying, I thought the Lord. <laughs> you know, when we say stuff like that, then, you know, I have I have every right. We have every right. Come on. Uh, to question your level of maturity. As a matter of fact, let's deal with this for a second. The Bible says in 2 Kings chapter number 3, that the Bible said that at this time, when these kings come to Jehoshaphat, Mama, the Bible says, uh, watch this, y'all, that he's 12 years in as a king. Now, he's... Uh, uh, he's not 12 years. Let me just say this. He, he ain't too grown, but he, he ain't too grown. But at 12 years old, you ain't a novice neither. In other words, you ought not be in a position where you don't know how to make right decisions for yourself. Come on. Uh, something in his spirit should have had a pause and said, wait a minute. Mm -mm, hold on. And that's what I'm trying to relate to y'all and what Apostle Lathan has been trying to tell us hearing the voice of God. Come on, y'all. As we mature in God, we ought not still be on that novice stage. Have I got one witness here? Y'all bear with me. Come on. Uh, we, 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 the, what, what you was getting caught up in and snared in. Come on. When you first came into this faith walk, uh, those same things ought not be your portion, man of God. Those same things ought not be your portion, woman of God. You ought to say, hey, hold on. This ain't God. Something ain't right with this. Come on, somebody. Have I got a witness here? The Bible goes on to tell us, praise God. Elias, and 2 Kings chapter number 3, and the king of Israel said, Elias, the Lord has caused these three kings to come together to deliver us 
watch this, to deliver us into the hands of Moab. Watch this. But 2 Kings chapter number 3 and verse number 11, it takes a turn, y'all. It takes a turn. I'm going to tell you where it takes a turn at. It takes a turn right here. The Bible said, but Jehoshaphat said, here it is, is there not here a prophet of the Lord that we may acquire of the Lord by him? So there's a level of trust in what God's going to say to him for them. But you know, all of this, if y'all don't mind, put this on the screen for me and just say prevention. Just type that on the screen. Y'all give me a few moments as I get myself together. Prevention. Did y'all share with your friends and share with your followers? Share now. Share with your friends and share with your followers. Prevention, prevention, prevention. Administrator Carol Harrell, Administrator Har Harrell, uh, Carol, look, look. I told you to put prevention for a reason. Watch this, watch this. Because chapter number three, Second Kings, verse number seven says, he just starts saying yes, giving up his resources, and it caused all of this. And all of this could have been prevented if he would have just consulted God. That's why I told you to write prevention. All of this wilderness traveling, all of this giving away my resources. Y'all ain't going to say that. Me not having no water, not having nothing enough for the people that's with me and the generation behind me. All of this could have been prevented if I would have consulted God. Man of God, woman of God, may I challenge you, you right now? Whose counsel are you listening to? Who, 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 who are you listening to that could prevent it all of this divorce? Baby's mama drama. I ain't scared of that one of y'all. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Hipping and hopping to everybody's ministry until you find some place where you're comfortable and you it's convenient for your flesh. Hey, yeah, yeah. Oh, God, nah. Prevention. Uh, who, who are you listening to? Who Facebook you jumping on? Uh, who, 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 who's now getting involved? Who's, who's getting involved in stuff and you don't really know that it's God until now you are caught up in that snare and you are entrapped into the entanglements of Satan and the web that you're in. But tonight I hear God telling me to tell somebody, open your ears and your eyes to receive the word of the Lord so that you will not be a repeat offender when it comes down to ignoring the things of God. The Bible says, praise God, in 2 Kings chapter number 3. But Jehoshaphat said, it's 630, but Jehoshaphat said, is there not here the prophet of the Lord that we may inquire of the Lord? And then also, let me just deal with this for a second. If God has given us a word for the people, people don't have a problem with listening to you if they don't have a problem looking, finding it hard to look at you. Let me say it one more time. People don't have a problem with listening to you if it's not hard for them to look at you. And I'm not just talking about with your, their eyes. You have a live a life in front of people that may want them to trust what you're saying. To believe that it's God that is speaking. Come on, y'all. Y'all ain't saying much now. I can't tell I'm so yeah, yeah. You got to live a life but when your name come up, it won't be suspicious activities attached to it. Huh? So there's a level of hope that's coming along from hearing from God. My God, that just spent to me. There's a level of hope that comes along that when we get to the prophet, he going to say what God says, and that's going to be my turnaround. Hey, the Bible says in 2 Kings chapter number 3, verse number 11, I got to hurry up, Lord. The Bible said, John, I say, is there not a prophet of the Lord here that we may acquire of him? And one of the king's servants answered <laughs> and said, here is Elisha, the son of Saphat, which poured water on the hands of Elijah. Now, I want you to receive something here in your spirit. So no doubt in my mind, the servant is walking saying, what in the world? Are we in this wilderness fall? <laughs> because the leaders did not hear from God. They just went out. And it's bad when the leader does have not heard from God and you wonder why the flock is in the condition that it's in. Because you're giving them scraps. Y'all ain't saying much. Have you ever been there before? Y'all tell it to. Shame the devil. 
Have you ever gotten to a place, you've been in a place before and you looked up and you said, God, what in the world am I doing here? God, how in the world I end up in this relationship with him or her? Y'all ain't gonna say, man, God, how in the world I end up with this doggone job? And God, this is way beneath me. What, what am I doing here? And, and, and you just fail to realize that this, you know, can I say something to y'all? Uh, some of us, uh, help me, Jesus, and, and I hope we stay friends, but watch this. Some of us don't have a demon problem. We just need to, have to make better decisions. Bless his holy name. Let me say that one more time. Some of us, we don't have demon problems. We just need to make better decisions. It's our decisions that is causing us to be in these places called wilderness. It's our decisions. And then you're going to try to demonize a bad decision that you didn't consult God about. And you wonder that the fruit that you're looking at has gone bad. Lord, I ain't scared of y'all. Let me go further. So the servant said, uh, yeah. the servant said, yeah, I know this fella. He here and he served. He washed the hands of Elisha. Second Kings chapter number three, the Bible says, and Jehoshaphat said, the word of the Lord is with him. Now he look at the confidence that Jehoshaphat had. You know, some of us, we still, we still don't want to come out of the stuff that we in. Come on, y'all. Jehoshaphat said, yeah, uh-huh. You're right, brother servant. The word of the Lord is with him. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat and the king of Edom went down, verse number 12, to him. Second Kings chapter number three and verse number 13. I got to talk to y'all for just a little more while. Let me work. Second Kings chapter number three and verse number 13 says, and Elijah said unto the king of Israel, what have I to do with thee? Watch this. Get to the prophets of thy father and the prophets of thy mother. In other words, here it is, Auntie Shepherd. Elisha had an attitude. It's in the text. He had a, he said, wait a minute. Now, if it had nothing to do to Jehoshaphat, I tell all y'all to go talk to the hand. Now, this speaks strength to what I'm about to say. You cannot be in your feelings while you're on your kingdom assignment because you can't hear from God. <laughs> oh, that just helped me. Am I doing okay, Sister Turner? You just let me know now. You, you, you cannot be in your feelings while you're on your kingdom assignment because these nations needed something because what was rebelling and coming up against them. And people have confidence in the people and the men and women of God and we don't have time for you to be in your feelings. The scripture never told us to pray for those that we like. Or pray for those that follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Zoom. It says, pray for those that what? Despitefully. Lord, you mean to me I got to pray for her? No, Lord, I want to snatch a batch of hair out of here. <laughs> I'm sorry, Lord. Well, I, I, I done messed up now. Come on, sorry. I want to I wanna tell them, oh, you got to pray for those. You can't be in your feelings. Why you on your kingdom assignment? You cannot be on your field because you can't hear from God. And the nations need a word. Leaders, prophets over at Liberty Temple, we want to hear from God while we're going through this pandemic. We know what the dog doing. We know what the Trump's doing. We know what the politicians are doing. We want to hear what God is doing. So the direction that we go in, we won't be in the wilderness. <sighs> Help me here, Holy Ghost. And the life said, if you want for the king, second king, chapter number three, verse number 13. And the life said unto the king, Israel, how about you do today? Get to your prophets of your father, thy mother. And the king of Israel said, hey, hold on. No, we will not. Because they ain't got no word. You got the word. King of Israel said, they ain't got deliverance in their mouth. Hiya. And that's why a lot of people are dying in the church right now. Because we following people, but they ain't got no anointing. I ain't scared of y'all. They ain't hearing from God. Come on. They entertaining and having intercourse with your flesh. And at the end of the day, there's no substance there. They have no sustaining ability to your next encounter with God. God ain't got us on quarantine just because of nothing. Come on, y'all. Why are you in your crib? You ought to be buying and rebuking demons and devils that your home will be peaceful. Come on. You mean to tell me you only hear from God when you're in the brick and the mortar? Come on. No, 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 no. You ought to be in your house right now finding stuff and uh, locating things uh, that's trying to detach you from God. Come on. Uh, you, you going through your stuff and see that man's number. That ain't your man no more. You still got his number. Get rid of it. Come on. Y'all ain't saying much. Uh, you still got on stuff and wearing things of uh, uh, what she gave you and what he gave you. Get rid of it. While you are in quarantine, you ought to be going through some sanctification. Cleaning out some stuff so it will not disconnect you and detach you from the things of the Father. I used to think this when I was a little boy. Oh, only the pure heart shall see God. I thought that's when you died. 
No, 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 Davis. This is what this is. You can't see God clearly when you got things in your way. You can't hear from God clearly when you got too many voices. I think Apostle Blake said this. I believe it was a prophet that came to town and said that uh, when she came to Liberty, he or she, that when something is being communicated to you, you must filter out what's not needed. Now, that was good. I, don't, I may not have it right verbatim. Y'all just follow me now. But when something is being communicated to your spirit, you must filter out the things that's not needed. So the prophet of God, so the prophet of God got the attitude and he said, no, I ain't going back to the prophets of my mom and my daddy. But the Lord calls these three kings together to deliver us into the hands of Moab. Verse number 14 of 2 Kings chapter number 3 said, and Elijah said, the Lord of hosts, live it for whom I surely stand. If it was not for the presence of Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, I would not look toward that he had an attitude. But then verse number 15 of 2 Kings chapter number 3, and I got to close. My God, I hope I'm doing okay, y'all. Are y'all still with me? My God, if y'all want me to keep going over here on Facebook, y'all, somebody say, man, to God, please keep going. Oh, my soul, down on my soul, y'all. I feel glory right now. I feel like God has just popped. I, see, I sense it in the Holy Ghost. Somebody's ears have just popped open, and your spirit now is pliable, and your spirit and your heart is pliable and tenderized to the things of God because you needed to hear this. I'm tired of being in the gray area. I'm tired of talking about some told me. Even if, praise God, what I hear from God, praise God, causes my flesh to get a certain kind of response. Let me tell you something. I'd rather hurt your feelings. Come on. Uh, and tear your feelings us up to rescue from a dying situation that will cause you to end into the traps of Satan. Yeah, I will hurt your feelings. I love you enough, here it is, to hurt your feelings, to keep you from out of Satan's snares and traps. I will. I will. I hurt your feelings. Come on, somebody. <laughs> I, I said, I hurt your feelings. He said, if it was not even, because Jehoshaphat, I will not even look your way. Am I doing okay, y'all? The Bible says, praise God, here it is. I got to hurry along. Verse number 15, 2 Kings chapter number 3. He says, but now bring me war. 2 <laughs> Kings chapter number 3. It didn't say war, but it said, bring me a minstrel. Hey, so Bring me a minstrel. 2 Kings chapter number 3, verse number 15. Bring me a minstrel. And it came to pass that when the minstrel played, the hand of the Lord came upon the prophet. God got a hold of him by the soothing of the minstrel's playing, created an atmosphere that was conducive from hearing from God and communicating to the people that needed to hear from God. The Bible says in 2 Kings chapter number 3, verse number 16, verse number 16, it says, Sister Della, and he said, Thus says the Lord, make this valley full of ditches. But thus says the Lord, and I want us to furthermore to go back to what thus says the Lord. I wish the saints. We'll go back to what thus says the Lord. I want them to go back very much to, to what thus says the Lord. Because it's only what God says. See, we learn from the scripture. Huh? And we, we, we move forward in the things of God based upon what God says out of the Holy Scripture. Oh, my God. Help me, God. Help me tonight, God. The Bible says uh, uh, in verse number 17 in 2 Kings chapter number 3, he said, you will not. Look what it says now. You will not see the wind, you will not see the rain, but this valley will be filled. Hold on, my soul, yeah. It shall be filled that you may drink. I'm gonna take care of that part. Both you and your cattle and your beasts. And verse number 18 says, and 2 Kings chapter number 3, and verse 18 says, and this whew, is but a light thing, ah, yeah, in the sight of the Lord. Y'all went through the wilderness. There's a nation that's raising up against you. You don't have enough for yourself. You have no nourishment and you don't have nothing else for the generation behind you. But it's something about when the minstrel came and played, thank you, prophet Ward. And when he came and played, the Bible said the prophetic began to flow. And when the prophetic began to flow, praise God, instructions came. The Bible says in 2 Kings chapter number three and verse number 17, but thus says the Lord, you won't see when. Now that's not really too, too bad. We really don't see when unless it is in the, realm of the tornadoes and we see what the wind can do and what gets a hold of the wind. I'm going to write about it, but, but wait a minute. It says, you ain't going to see wind, neither will you see rain, but wait, the valley going to be filled. Hey, I feel like leaping in my home right now. The, the, you ain't going to see the wind, you ain't going to see the rain, but the, I'm connecting with the men of God that the valley going to be filled. Come on. And, and, and when the valley gets filled, it's going to be enough for me to drink 
take a bath in. Come on, somebody. Uh, come on, my homie and my buddy over here and say, hey, man, hey, hey, hey drink over here. Come on, somebody. Uh, uh, nourishment over here. Your cattle and your beef. And then he goes on further to say, this is but a light thing. And not only is it a light thing in the 18th verse, he says, and he will deliver the Moabites into your hands. As I come to my benediction, man of God, mm. he not only gonna give me what I need, but man of God, woman of God, he also is gonna deliver the thing that is raised up against me, that is contending and warring against me. If you start hearing from God, man of God, if you start hearing from God, woman of God, turn it over to the Lord. And when you turn it over to the Lord, let God deal with it. Let God speak to you how to navigate through those tough times and those tough seasons. I'm going to say this to you as I get ready to go, uh, go to my exit. The best way to stop something is not to start it. Yes, I know they got intervention and they got all kinds of programs, AA and Drug Anonymous and all like that, that may prevent you from having a life uh, of sobriety. But the best way to stop something is not to start it. Don't start listening to the devil, y'all. Don't have divided loyalties. Thank you, Sister Nadine, for what a wonderful uh, insertion right there. Cast thy care upon the Lord. Cast thy burden upon the Lord. And just because God don't do it overnight, it doesn't mean God can't do it over time. What God doesn't do instantly, it doesn't mean he cannot do strategically. And in the strategies of God, the processes of God, he began to eliminate those things out of your life. The more you begin to say yes to him. I heard you, Apostle Lathan. Apostle Lathan say, listen here. Some things God ain't going to deliver you from. Some things you're going to have to give up to get deliverance. Y'all ain't, you're going to have to give up. God ain't snacking those squares out your mouth. Come on, somebody. God ain't snacking that Jameson out your hand. He ain't gonna snatch you out that bed. He can now. And you'll think, come on, so you'll think you're wrong if you did that. <laughs> but that's something you just gotta give up. And just like Jehoshaphat got engaged and things that was out of covenant with God, come on, y'all. As we mature in God, you know that ain't God. Move around. Everything that's popular don't mean that it's God. And every door that's for you, every door that's open, it don't mean it's for you. Allow God to speak to you. Allow God to navigate you to that place. In fact, I like saying it this way. Allow God to change your latitude and your longitude, which makes up your location. And when God puts you in that place, it is strongly recommended that you stay there until he give you your release. I heard from God tonight. How many of you heard from God tonight? How many of you heard from God? I'm going to look down at my Facebook for just a moment to see some of the comments. But come on. I know you can't unmute, but I feel God has spoke to us tonight. I feel like God in this fifth part five, this part five has ignited something in my spirit, Sister Cows, that I got to hear from. I got to get to God and I can't be getting to trying to get to God with people that's out of covenant with God. I'll put two both together, except they agree. My time is out. Bless his holy name. Come on, man of God, to let me know that I did not have any kind of monologue by myself and we just have precious kingdom dialogue. Come on, y'all. Over on the Facebook, put them hearts and thumbs up there. Put them hearts and thumbs up there. Share with your friends and share with your followers. Remember, y'all, you all can follow us over on YouTube. We're on Zoom now. You can follow us on Facebook. Liberty, I'm saying us because I'm a part of them now. Liberty, y'all ain't getting rid of me now. Uh-uh. No, we, we is family. We is. I ain't say our. We is family. <laughs> and then, praise God, you can follow us over on Twitter. Twitter. Let's be a blessing on tonight. Thank you so much for helping me, Sister Denise. Let's be a blessing on tonight. Let's get our seeds. Let's sow our seeds into good ground. And there's ways that's going to be on the Facebook where you can sow your seed. I want you to move in this realm and I want you to move expeditiously because we're not going to just hear good word and then don't praise God. Invest in what we just received. I want you to go to the cash app, the dollar sign for all my uh, Liberty family, if y'all know what it is, but let me repeat it for those that's not, and it's the first or second time and they joined along with us. You can go to the cash app at L-T-C-H-I, L-T-C-H-I. I feel God. I feel God, Sister Denise. You also can zeal it at Liberty Temple 
liberty.org. Come on, y'all, let's be a blessing. Now, for those of the Liberty Temple, y'all know that we customly, when we used to be in a position where we sow seed and God has manifested himself to us. Thank you so very much. And you also can go to, you can text your seed to the number 833-733-7444. Eight three three, seven three three, eight two. Thank you, woman of God. I see you. Eight two six two. Thank God for Jesus. Now I gotta, I gotta. I thank God for y'all. For Sister uh, Turner, we're gonna continue to pray for our leaders. Okay, we're gonna continue to pray for the uh, Apostle Lathan and the family. And uh, also, if I didn't get, if I didn't mess up too bad. Sister Carol, if I didn't mess up too bad, I'm scheduled as well to be the guest preacher at Liberty Temple this Sunday at 11.15. Is that okay, y'all? So I hope I didn't mess up too bad. If I did, they're going to call me and say, uh, we changed our mind. You ain't got to come. <laughs> but we still going to be family. Hallelujah. Can I get a witness? So I thank God for every last one of you all. Remember your seeds. You can sow to cash out L-T-C-H-I. You also can go to, you can zeal it at libertytemple.org. Thank you. Bless his holy name. And you will also, you can go to, you can give your seed at 833-733-8262. I enjoy Jesus. Liberty Temple, we are right. Thank you so very much. Let me greet a few all. We got a few more moments and then we're going to go. God bless you, Brother Todd. I can't get all y'all. Jerry Jackson. Sister Lloyd, you know you're all right with me again. Sister Della, God bless the saints. Uh, Prophet is coming. Uh, William Burden, uh, I love all of y'all. Hope y'all come back Sunday. Will y'all come back Sunday? Will y'all share with y'all friends and share with your followers? Come back Sunday. And uh, uh, we're going to enjoy Jesus a little bit more. Remember, let's keep our leader up before the Lord. Remember that, y'all. All right, woman of God. All right, man of God. Until next time, I say on my broadcast, remember to have faith in God. And I want y'all to do that. Remember to have faith in God. I hear from God. Let me pray you out. Satan, you're a liar. The blood of Jesus is against you. Every retaliatory demon that will come along and try to assassinate the word of the Lord that was planted in our hearts. We pray now, God, that you do something unique and special for us. Give us sweet peace and give us sweet rest. Give us a blood covering and a blood washing. Until we come again and meet again, these things we ask you to this Amen. Amen. Turn to all. Go ahead. Be blessed now. Good night. Thank you. God bless you. God Amen. bless you, God. Thank you. God bless you, Pastor Davis. God bless you all. God bless you, Pastor Davis. God bless you all. Good night.